We know he's got his work cut out for him either way, right? I mean, that that's the number one thing is that this is a team that, as you have said, has been dysfunctional and had issues across the across you know the board for years and years here. And it just, it's, you know, even in a year where they make the playoffs, right? We go, whoa, they're turning around. They still found a way to charger and blow a 27 point lead. The Chargers chargering has been a thing for the last decade. Jim Harbaugh, I think, is the guy that can change that, you know, total aura, feel, perception, whatever you want to call it, around and build a winner here. And yeah, I'm, I'm with you in that I wouldn't be shocked if we saw Colin Kaepernick involved. If he wants to get back in football and somehow, some way, I'm sure Jim Harbaugh will open the door for him uh, in any way possible. The Jim Harbaugh statement, the only job you start at the top is digging a hole. I love that. I love that. The only job you start at the top is digging a hole. So we know we got to earn our way. Be better today than yesterday. Be better tomorrow than today. My priorities are faith, family, and football, and we are going to attack each with an enthusiasm unknown to mankind. This organization is putting in the work, investing capital, building infrastructure, and doing everything within its power to win. Great effort equals great results, and we're just getting started. That is a football coach. And, folks, we aren't Jim Harbaugh fanboys. He's not our friend. He doesn't like Chris, although he's maybe warmed up to Chris now that Chris went up to Michigan and said nice things about him. He doesn't really like me, but we know coaches when we see coaches, and we know guys who can be effective. And in today's NFL, when more and more players from the NIL reality of college football are graduating to the NFL, and you need to rewire me to team because it is all me now. In college football. And look, it's long overdue that the college football player can be a business to himself because they've been exploited for years and given nothing and not allowed to make anything even beyond the confines of the football program because you have to be an amateur athlete. Jim Harbaugh knows how to take a bunch of freelancers and pull them together. Yeah. And get them to think about team Agreed. over themselves. Agreed. He did it at Michigan. Yep. Look at his two best years came once NIL was a thing. He still knows how to get them to set aside their own personal desires and wants and motivations to submit to team. And that is the thing that I mean, it just it oozes out of this statement. It's basic. It, it like we try to overcomplicate football all the time. At the core, it's about getting guys to put themselves behind team. And to do everything possible to honor and support and maximize team. Do your job. That's a subset of team first. And you see organizations lose sight of it. I mean, clearly the Eagles lost team first at some point down the stretch because nobody was rallying together to be a football team. You mentioned the Chargers blowing a 27 point lead. We saw that in the playoff game. Last January, do you think any team coached by Jim Harbaugh is going to blow a 27 point lead? Do you think he's going to allow that? He'll run out onto the field and deck somebody before he would allow that to happen. He's not going to let that happen on his watch. It's all about team. It's all about team success. It sounds cliched. It sounds hokey, but you know what else it sounds like? It sounds like something that's going to work. Yeah, no, it, it does. It does work. We know that it's, it's tried and true and it works. And we know that with football. And, you know, to add on, because I, I agree with everything you, you're saying there, he's got a good way, too, of not making everybody on the team a robot, right? Buying in the team, but understanding, hey, there's a little individuality on our football team. You know, it's not, it's not like New England where just like everybody was scared to talk to the media and then no one – like, it's, it's not that, but yet there's principles of New England that he does have that are very, you know, as we know – work in the NFL and you can be successful and get behind, but he does let his guys be his guys. That was one of the things I, again, that I was amazed by, you know, he is into young people, the young generation, how he, I mean, he's amazed with, you know, how they are. They're unique. They're so much more, you know, aware of the world. That was one of the things he was kind of saying to us. I mean, come on. Are you kidding me? When I was 22, 23, 24, he was kind of saying, he's like, all I was was like football and work out. These kids now, they care about people. They care about animals. Like there's so much, 
you know, more well-rounded. But I thought that was refreshing, right? Because it's not robotic football. It obviously shows you there's a human side where he can connect. But in that same conversation, you get old school. And I don't think I ever told you this story. But then you get also, okay, that's cool. Wow, I wouldn't think, you know, Jim Harbaugh is quite like that having more philosophical life questions with the player. I mean, you know, conversations with the players. But then in that same conversation, you're going to like this. It's a Friday, right? Day before they got to play a game. His, For some reason, his son, one of his younger sons, 10, 11 years old, has a football game on Friday morning. So he's going to go to that, right? He's a little late for our meeting, but he's told us before that, hey, we're, I'm going to be late. I'm going to try to go see my son's game. So, hey, of course, we're cool, and we're talking to players and whatever else. He gets back, and he's kind of, um, he goes, man, it was my turn to bring the Gatorades and snacks today. I didn't bring them. I forgot. Oh, and, you know, and he kind of went in, and he was like, oh, what a tragedy. He's like, are we, are we making these kids soft? That they're playing a football game, and they're more worried about their snacks after the game. And he kind of goes in on that. I mean, they're more worried about their Gatorade and their snacks than they are winning the game. And then he goes, and then he goes, and I mean, I'm there. And it's 10-year-old football, and they got a tent on the sideline like it's too hot. You know, they're blocking them from the sun. He's like, are we raising these kids too soft? I think we're raising them too soft. So that's who he is. He's got a great blend of old school, we're going to be tough, we're going to do things the right way, but also understands where the world is. And you wouldn't think that sometimes when you look at him and hear his, his interviews, but uh, he's a little more well-rounded in that area than than even I expected. And I think the big difference between him and Belichick, he trusts his guys to not say something they shouldn't say because he trusts the fact that he has rewired their brains. So when they do speak, it'll sound a lot like him. Sure. And they won't say anything that will cause a problem because they are team first. You're not going to be part of this team if you're not team first, and they're not going to go out and say something that hurts the team because they truly are team first, and I trust them to be that way. Bill Belichick has the Stepford Patriots, or did have the Stepford Patriots, maybe it'll be the Stepford Falcons going forward, where they've been basically lobotomized, and they're afraid to say anything because they don't want to incur the wrath of Belichick because he doesn't trust them with rare exceptions like Gronk, and maybe he just knew there's no way I can control this guy, and nobody can understand what he says anyway, so it's not like he can hurt us. But, other but Gronk that, was still like, in line. He was silly, but he never said anything well, crazy. You know, like, I mean, yeah. he was, you know, that's, that's where, like, like right, when Wes Welker made the whole joke and all that and tried to be kind of funny with Rex Ryan and the feet and the toes and all that, right? He, he benched his ass. He didn't like that, no doubt. So, yeah, I mean, you know, you're right. Yeah, I just, it is interesting that way with Belichick. And the NFL is just more interesting when Jim, Har Jim Harbaugh's in it. Everything about the NFL is more interesting with Jim Harbaugh in it. And I'm glad that he's back. I thought he was coming back two years ago with the Vikings. He thought he was coming back two years ago with the Vikings. Last year, I don't know how close it was with the Broncos. I think it may have been that they were trying to line up an alternative to Sean Payton if for whatever reason they didn't hire Sean Payton. But now it's going to be Payton and Harbaugh twice a year doing battle. It's incredible. Andy Reed and Harbaugh. I mean, if I'm Antonio Pierce, I think I'd be careful what I wish for. I'm in this division with at least one walk-in Hall of Fame head coach, another one who's got a damn good argument to make it, and a third one who could end up earning his way in as well. Uh, I better step up my game. I mean, you can look at it as a challenge. You can look at it as, oh, crap. And I'm sure Antonio Pierce welcomes the challenge. He's got a high degree of faith and confidence. But that becomes one of the most interesting divisions in all of football with the arrival of Jim Harbaugh. That's 100% sure. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.